Welcome back guys to to the shop, to the hangar, to the hangout. All right, so it's been a couple days. Uh, these servos, they're not always in the easiest place to get to and you get in there and you, you start trying to put things in, things don't line up, you gotta take it back out, do this, do that. So it takes a while. So uh, it's been about two days on this and I just got everything finished up. Uh, the first day was just a lot of fitting. I had to, uh, I had to trim uh, some area here uh, so that the arm that controls, um, that connects to the steel rod doesn't hit because of the screw. If you do the clevises, it's not gonna be an issue, but because I, I changed to the ball link setup, um, I had to do just a little bit, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing. And you know, really it was just cleaning up in there because they had like a little, a uh, little notch kind of cut out. And essentially if you just made it flush, it was no big deal. And then I had to trim off the, these uh, servo arms that I use have a, like where the screw goes in, I gotta move it up where you guys can see here. So where the screw goes in at the tip, it uh, has a thick spot, which is, you know, doesn't, I don't understand that because you're, you know, this would be the weaker area. You know, if it's gonna break, it's gonna break here anyways. But, so I took the Dremel with a cutting, cutting disc and just cut that off flush. That way, uh, if, if the problem with it like this, so it goes on the servo here, oh, sorry, I gotta fix the camera here and then I went in this way with the bolt as it come down it was hitting the servo frame so when I trimmed it off it let the servo head sit flush and it clears uh, no issue um, I did have to like I would I could get the front two screws in and then the back two screws uh, that actually hold the L brackets to the wood I had to uh, adjust the holes a little bit so I took the blind nuts out and took a Dremel bit and I essentially just, cause it was longer, I guess. I don't know if the servo is bigger than what they, whatever they set it up for, but real easy little thing, put the blind nuts back in and tighten them down. Um, and I put lock nuts on the back side to hold it in. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, it's nothing crazy. I really like the ball link um, over there, Clevis. It, it, it would have not, I mean, it would have been too hard to get the, the clevis in line with, uh, on both sides without it binding. So the ball link is a better choice in my opinion. Uh, but it's in there. I put washers, one washer on one side and the nut on the back side. Uh, to, so if the ball just happens to pop off, it's not going to come off. That's just something I do. I've always done. That's how they do it on the real heli on like real helicopters for like ball links. So probably not needed but oh well um, but it's in there and uh, I did notice a couple things it's a good chance it's a good time to tighten up the uh, uh, vertical uh, stabilizer uh, mounts the rudder mounts uh, and there's another set in the back I got to do and then I also noticed that there's a there's a metal rod um, shoot sorry I hope you guys can see I don't have my phone there's a metal rod that runs, or a bulkhead that runs right here. And there's a metal, just a long rectangular piece that this attaches to. And it has one screw holding it to that bulkhead. There's a hole over here, but there's no bolt in it. And that side's the same way, but that side's actually loose. You can, you can jar it. So I gotta get in there and tighten it up. But, so what I'm gonna do, and I, and I won't be able to show you this, it'd be too hard to see, uh, but I'm just gonna run a screw drill and screw into that bulkhead from the front side here and that'll secure both sides uh, like i said the other side over there you can actually rattle this thing and it's loose the whole bracket's about to come off the bulkhead um so and this has a no lock in it oh it does have a lock in it because it no no it doesn't okay good this is a heavy duty uh, piston hopefully they don't leak so uh, but i got to take all this hose out now I cleaned up the, the little little lock, locking ball that goes into this thing because they were rusted. Cleaned them up. I uh, noticed that the wheel's hitting as it comes out, hitting right here. This is real flimsy. 
So you, if you wanted to, you could put some carbon, like some resin and some glass in here to kind of stiffen that up. I don't have to trim this corner because when the wheel comes out, it's hitting. See, look. There you go. So just an easy little trim. There we go. Um, but yeah, I got both sides in here. And just to kind of give you guys to show, I got it hooked up to, to the um, servo driver here. And hopefully you guys can see that. I mean, take this off my head and just kind of push it up closer. Uh, there you go. And you can kind of just see how it works here. Uh-oh. Hold on, I gotta change bolts. There we go. So, full range on this. So, the only place it really binds is on when it goes full back the ball link is bottoming out on the wood and really anything you can you can do for that except for maybe cut a little groove in there but once the servo is actually centered because it's it's the arm is on the new i put the arm on neutral but it's off and it actually goes that direction a little bit more so when i do sub trim it's going to limit that travel so it shouldn't be an issue, I'll just limit it, but this, this goes full travel and no binding. And then there's the rod, so works as an aileron when you need it, and then flaps down. Flaps down, so hopefully that's, that should be more than enough. That's about, I could get more if I need be, but that should be plenty for aileron. And right there is kind of neutral so that's all there is to it uh, so um, next thing is rudder rudder and stab I'll kind of show you this see it's loose yeah this one's done too uh, so I'm gonna flip it over and get to work on uh, the rudder servos Hopefully those will go a little quick, quicker, a little quick, quicker, and then the um, the rudder or the the stab is going to take a little bit more. Um, so I got to get the rudders done first because I got to line some stuff up uh, with the pieces that actually there's some pieces that glue onto the stabs that hide the hinge and everything. So uh, you just got to take a take a second to to come up with a plan of action before you. Uh, you start cutting uh, and, I, and I'm pretty sure like I mentioned uh, this one is secured with screws that that other one I'm gonna go ahead and glue it on I there there are it feels like sounds like when you do the little tap test you know when I was searching for hard points you, you can tell when there's something solid so in this area there feels to be some type of hardwood and then up here hopefully it lines up with the um, with those screw holes so that way I can uh, put it on with screws and if it's not strong enough or, or if I need to, I'll just glue it down. Uh, so, and there's a message. But that's it for now. Like I said, just a quick update and I'm gonna flip it over, do another video. I'll probably get another video not showing you the hardware um, for the rudders. The rudders have like a, a pin on the servo arm and then there's a shaft that actually stays in the rudder so as you put the rudders on it'll come down and it'll set over that that pin and drive it kind of like the rudder on the big hawk uh, the big viper jet so all right you guys have a good one i'm going to get get this thing flipped over and start working on the rudders cheers <laughs>